a Doberman that sees ghosts? Is it possible? Well, I don't know, but I recently read this book right here called Between Shadows Eyes by Jill Hedgecock. And uh, for those observant people out there, you may have noticed this sitting on the desk behind me in some of my previous Doberman Planet videos. This is a grab you by the pants suspense story about a Doberman with just that ability. And I think it'll ultimately prove to be one of those classic, just timeless stories about a kid and their dog. Except in this story, the kid is a 16 year old girl named Sarah and the dog is her Doberman shadow with a few supernatural things mixed in. And guys, it's so nice to see a Doberman in a realistic role as a hero for a change and not just as a villain all the time. And I know this book is fiction, but I was intrigued enough that I just had to get some answers to some questions about where the story came from. So I tracked down the author, Jill Hedgecock, to find out more. So let's go. Look who I found, it's Jill Hedgecock. Uh, Jill, I'm so excited to talk with you today about your book, Between Shadows Eyes. Uh, thank you so much for talking with me. For those of you who don't know, Jill Hedgecock is an award-winning internationally published author. She grew up in the Sacramento area of California. Uh, she has a master's degree in environmental management and has traveled and continues to travel the world. Uh, she's deeply involved in the writing world, which I'd imagine you'd have to be to be an award-winning author. And she even helps out aspiring uh, writing youth through the California Writers Club. Uh, she has three rescue dogs and she's competed in obedience and agility competitions with those dogs and is even placed along the way. And she actually uh, writes for the Diablo Gazette quite often and started a uh, column for dog rescue column for hard to place uh, dogs that are looking for homes. And this includes some of those uh, dangerous breed dogs. She's written articles for the Doberman Network Magazine and Bark Magazine, and her first debut novel was The Rhino in the Room. It was released in September of 2018, and it quickly won the New Apples Awards for Excellence, and it helped her to develop a very loyal following of readers from around the world. Her second novel, Between Shadows Eyes, uh, just came out, and honestly, I read it, guys. It is an awesome book, and I think it'll be every bit as big as the first. So, Jill, thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking with me today. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. So Jill, tell me a little bit about the plot of uh, Between Shadows Eyes. So Between Shadows Eyes is um, the story of a 16-year-old orphan girl. Um, her dad has recently died and she's trying to hide the fact that she's living on her own because she doesn't want to go into the foster care system. And she rescues this Doberman who's barking and drawing attention to animal control. And she's freaking out that she's going to get outed that she's living by herself and right. so she takes shadow to um, an animal behaviorist and uh, the animal behaviorist tells her oh your dog sees ghosts well she's not buying any of that goes home uh, puts her fingers between the dog's eyes while she's petting it and discovers yes the dog is seeing ghosts and when she puts her fingers between the dog's eyes she can see ghosts too okay and the, and the novel kind of takes off from there, I'm guessing. Yes, okay. definitely. Um, I shouldn't say I'm guessing. I read it. I loved it. I know. <laughs> I'm just trying not to uh, ruin anything for everybody else. But um, it's, a, it's a fantastic book. It kept me turning the pages. Um, I, was, I was absorbed in it pretty quickly. But uh, Dr. Griffin's an interesting character. Um, she kind of, I noticed she developed along the way, and she seemed to be kind of uh, infatuated with Shadow a bit. Is that right? Is that fair to say? That's correct. So, so Dr. Griffin is the animal behavioralist that she, she took to the, um, she took Shadow to. And um, we very quickly um, uh, sense that something's not quite right with this woman. Mm -hmm. She's a little odd. Um, but she, poor Sarah, the, my main character, doesn't have anybody to turn to and so she ends up turning to Dr. Griffin for for help and um, it the story kind of takes off from there you know you kind of don't know is, is doc, Dr. Griffin a good person or a bad person um, and um, she's just she was so much fun to write and it was also really fun to create parallels between what Sarah is going through as an orphan 
and also what Dr. Griffin experienced when she was a younger person as well. So there's some parallel storylines between them that um, was really fun to write. And I, that was fun to read too. <laughs> um, so what was your inspiration for Shadow? Like why did you, obviously you picked a Doberman, um, but what was your inspiration for the character of Shadow? So um, Shadow was originally um, not a Doberman. Okay. <laughs> she, he was really a, based on my dog, who was a Border Collie mix. And my dog used to bark for unknown reasons. And my dog also loved to be petted between the eyes. Just loved it, like, you know, nirvana for the dog. Right. And um, the other thing that sort of inspired the story was... Um, uh, when we first moved into this house, um, the original owner, not the people we had bought the house from, but the original owner had come by and had mentioned that her um, teenage son had died in a car crash. Hmm. And um, every once in a while, we used to have a hot tub in the backyard, and every once in a while, I just kind of see this flash of light, flash of light. And I was like, I wonder if that's him, you know? Yeah, right. Um, and so sort of took those story elements and cre created um, Between Shadow's Eyes. Um, my, my, my shadow um, exited out of the story after um, I got involved with uh, the dog rescue column that you mentioned earlier. Um, and um, Ruby, um, who's a very famous um, Doberman, uh, she is such an inspiration to me. She's such a beautiful dog. And I, I got interested in, in the breed when um, I was going on vacation and I didn't want to spotlight a dog for my column. So I actually wrote a, a column about Ruby. Uh, Ruby, just for you guys that don't know, Ruby is quite famous in the Doberman world. Um, most uh, fanatical Doberman owners like myself know who Ruby is. And uh, uh, yeah, you said 100,000 100, followers, something like that on 89, Instagram? 89,000. 89 right now, yeah. but it's always going up. So. It's always going up. Um, but uh, the owner, Charles Lindsay, takes some fantastic, amazing photos of Ruby that captures Dobermans just beautifully, which is probably why uh, Ruby is so popular. And just yeah. so you guys know, this is Ruby right here. Yeah, that's Ruby. Beautiful dog. And um, she... Um, she was it was an interesting story but also i was really inspired by her you know and i uh, the more i learned about dobermans because i did as part of writing that column the more i thought you know that would make a really nice um breed to spotlight for this book because i feel like um, dobermans have been vilified um and hollywood you know typically makes them this you know really aggressive, nasty breed, and right. there's, they can be real sweethearts. They're always the villain, Yeah, right? they're always the villain. They're never the hero, at least, yeah. I mean, very, I can't, I can't hardly think of a single movie where they're the, the hero, but, yeah. um, but they're always the villain, it seems like, yeah, so. And it's like, here's, you know, you know I like to have platforms for my books, right. you know, for, for Rhino in the Room, it's Rhino Conservation, they're being poached to death, and it's like, wow, I can do something good for the dog breed, and, um, and have Ruby be my inspiration yeah yeah so. oh that's yeah and I, I wish I'm so glad that you did that and that you incorporated Doberman in that way because I feel like more people need to see the Doberman breed for what it really is right not just for uh, a evil guard dog right you know so yeah. I'm so glad you did that but um, and I gotta say you nailed the Doberman breed <laughs> like I that's what I do I just study the Doberman breed and I'm totally infatuated with the Doberman breed and I learn everything I can and I try to share it with my viewers on YouTube and, and, and on my website. So that's what I do. And I usually can spot somebody who doesn't own one. Uh -huh. I couldn't tell for, you seem like you knew everything about the Doran breed. How did you, did you do research on the breed and how did you bring it to life in such a realistic way? So yes, I did a lot of research. I always research my books to the nth degree. Right, right. <laughs> um, and I watched a, I watched a lot of videos, and I actually read a lot of um, blog posts, including yours, <laughs> and Thank watched you. your your YouTube videos. Um, Thank you. Uh, but um, you know, I love dogs. I mean, they're like in my DNA, and um, and and I. I, I get them, you know, yeah. and um, so as much as uh, there are breed differences, there's also sort of the heart of the dog, right. um, and that's what I really tried to capture, you know, the soft, 
the soft, loving, amazing side of dogs, uh, regardless of the breed. But you know, sure. sure, you know, but especially for Dobermans because they have been vilified and they're you know you know people like are scared when they see them and it's like why they're just right. sweethearts right you it's know? all on how they're raised it's it's they're just sweethearts mm -hmm. um so i really wanted to bring that to light for people no i'm so glad you did so do you think shadows bond with sarah and the way that they were together do you think that could have happened with any other breed of dog yes and no um i think um some of the story elements require a big dog right um or a larger breed dog. I don't think a Chihuahua could have filled that <laughs> role. Sure. Um, but, you know, I feel like the heart of a dog, you know, is the heart of a dog. Yeah. And, uh, you know, individual dogs have personality. I really feel like when I was um, rewriting the story with the Doberman that um, I had captured who Ruby was mm -hmm. um, because Ruby's, you know, I, I follow her on Instagram. I think um, Charles Lindsay, the owner, uh, does an absolutely fabulous do job of um, capturing the breed's personality. Well, he's a photographer, right? Right. So, yeah. Right. And um, so just I got to sort of know Ruby through him and therefore the Dober Doberman breed, because I feel like Ruby's a, a great example of the breed. Yeah. Um, and um, originally the, the, my dog Shadow was male, and um, my critique group member said, why don't you make it a female? Um, you know, make, her, make it a little softer, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I feel like that did soften up the, um, the perception maybe of, of the breed. And then, you know, honestly, Sarah's bond with Shadow is my bond with my dogs on the page. Right. Um, so it's easy for me to capture those feelings because I'm, you know, absolutely adore my dogs. And um, so from some, you know, it's not, I don't think it's breed specific. I think it's dogs, dog specific. Yeah. Um, but um, definitely I'm, I'm a fan of the, the Doberman breed. You've also done a lot of agility and obedience training with dogs in the past, right? Correct. Well, tell me how the agility training was. What I've always wanted to get into that with my dog, but I never actually have done it. Um, is it is it hard to work up to that? How how do you go working with your dog and and getting them to bond with you and trust you? Because there's a lot of trust involved in that and the agility, right? And work towards a competition. Uh, hours and hours and hours of training. <laughs> this is the easy answer. Um, but like you said, I think there is a sense of trust. And the, you know what's so interesting about dogs is it doesn't kind of matter what you know you say. It's they are reading your body language. It's how you say it, right? Well, they're reading your body language. So my agility trainer will tell me, you know, where's your belly button pointing? You know, because if you're saying tunnel, 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 and your belly button is saying jump, <laughs> the, the belly button wins right. nine times out of 10. It's right. really fascinating. Um, and it's really interesting to watch um, other people competing uh, because um, when the dog goes wrong, you know, the, the, a lot of times the handler will be like, but I said, you know, but your feet, yeah. <laughs> your belly button, yeah. everything about your body was saying, go that way. And just because you said, go that way, you know, the dog is watching your, your, your body. And you know, isn't that fascinating? Yeah, they're so in tuned with they their They are arms. so in tuned. And, and not only so in tuned, but you know, sometimes I marvel because you know, you're asking a lot, you know, to you know, compete 16, 18, obstacles yeah. when you're competing you're asking a lot of that dog yeah um and why why should they because when you're competing you, you don't have treats in your hand right right why should they they do it because they love you right they do it because they love you and because they want to please you and think about that i mean a dog they don't understand the purpose they don't understand I, yeah. it um and there's you know a dog in will supersede its own breed. It's like there could be a dog that I could be playing with, mm -hmm. you know, standing outside that ring. They're putting you above that, their own species. Yeah, that's, it's unbelievable when you think about it. It really is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but um, to get back to your original question, um, 
it takes a lot. It takes a lot of practice. But um, I actually had the opportunity to compete at CPE Nationals in 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's, it was, we, we qualified in seven out of the nine runs, and um, it was magical. That's awesome. It's magical. It's magical when you complete a course and, you know, you're, you're in sync. It's yeah. magical. And I got to ask just because it's my thing, but do you see many Dobermans out there on the agility course? I do see Dobermans. Yeah. Um, it's by, you know, by far the most popular breed is, is herding breeds, border collies in particular. Yeah. Um, but you do see Dobermans because they're smart, they're agile, and they love their owners. Yeah. You know, so you do definitely do see them. And easy to train too. Very and they're easy, easy to train. To train. Yeah, because awesome. they love their owners, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's the part that uh, that Hollywood doesn't get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's funny because you know a lot of times people will write. I've read books from people who aren't necessarily involved with dogs, and they'll write a they'll they'll write a pretty good story. But your story, first of all, is exceptional. It was a bond between the the ga the girl and her Doberman, and uh, but I feel like why you're so successful at writing about that is how involved you are with. The breed. I mean, the agility, the obedience. Not everybody does that. You also write a column for the Diablo Gazette, all about um, placing hard-to-place uh, rescue dogs in homes. Right. Right. Tell tell us about that a little bit. So the column is called Ruby Dooby Doo to the Rescue, okay. and uh, this um, is it right here, right? That's it. Yes. So this is my um, June 2019 column, and um, there's Ruby. Um, uh, who's my little mascot and um, the column is for dogs that are really really hard to place either they're senior um, they have health issues they're uh, a breed that's very common mm. um, and um, you know I went to my publisher um, in 2017 I'd been writing for him uh, book review column for about a year okay. and I said and I wanted to do more for dogs because uh, I used to foster and I couldn't do that anymore and I thought you know I could write about dogs and I could try to help the dogs that really 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 need um, more exposure right and so that's why um, Ruby Dooby Doo to the rescue was born um, and just so people know, Diablo Gazette, that's a San Francisco Bay Area publication, correct? Correct, okay. correct. It's a local magazine, um, it's published monthly. All right. And um, so since the column has um, started, I've actually um, had 18 of my um, charges be placed. Wow. And each issue you write about a new story of a new dog that needs to be adopted? Correct. Is that how it works? Correct. And usually I, I've done some overlaps, but I also try to... Um, spotlight a, a particular dog rescue in the um, general vicinity of the paper's distribution. So it's not only the dog that's getting, uh, the specific dog that's getting exposure, but also the rescues. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Can I, I want to read this one. <laughs> I, haven't re I haven't read this one yet, so I'm going to read that if that's okay with you. Sure, when we're, absolutely. When we're, when we're finished here. Absolutely. <laughs> um, do you see many Dobermans in your rescue column? Right? Never. Never? Really? <laughs> never, never yet since 2017, since I started the column. But I think it's because, A, they're, they're not, um, they're, they're relatively rare. Yeah. But also um, purebreds and, and um, dogs that are largely a certain breed um, have their own rescues. Yeah. So they fall into that safety net um, for um, Dobermans in the Bay Area and, and Northern California, there is a, a Doberman rescue. Um, so also, I think they're just great dogs, so why would they be in rescue? <laughs> right. People just love them. They want to keep them. them. Yep, exactly. <laughs> that, that's my take on the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Do you think the Doberman breed gets a bad rap, or do you think that they're portrayed fairly in the media and elsewhere? Absolutely not. <laughs> not they're not they're not portrayed fairly. They are not portrayed fairly. Yeah. They're you know you know especially having gotten to know Ruby through her Instagram column, you know they're goofballs. They're yeah. loving. They're um, sweet animals. And then you know Hollywood puts them with bare teeth and always the guard dog. Always the guard dog. The villains guard dog. The vi you know mm -hmm. yeah. And so no, they've gotten a bad rap for sure. Okay, so the most important question of the day, do you think Dobermans can see ghosts? 
<laughs> I think Shadow can see ghosts. Right, yes. Absolutely. I know that. I'm aware of that. Um, but I actually do think that Dobermans and all dogs actually are very sensitive to energy mm -hmm. and the things around them. And I do think that ghosts are energy, you know, and I think that, um, that, that dogs can um, sense that. Well, we'll leave it there. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. Thank, Thank you so you much so for being much. with me. Uh, if you guys want to pick up her new book, it's Between Shadows Eyes. It's available on Amazon. I'll have the link down below in the description of this video. Also, if you want to connect with Jill, see what she's working on now, just head on over to jillhedgecock.com. Jill, this has been a once in a lifetime opportunity for me to talk with you. I loved your book. It was just fantastic. So thank you so much for speaking with me. And thank you for the opportunity to talk to you and your, and your followers. Yes. Thank you. I can't believe I just sat down with Jill Hedgecock. That was awesome. Guys, this is a great book. And if you're a Doberman nut like me, I think you're gonna love it. But you know what, even if you're not, and you just enjoy a good book about a girl and her bond with her dog with a whole lot of suspense tossed in, I think you're gonna really enjoy this book. And if you wanna learn more about this amazing, incredibly unique breed that is the Doberman, Hit that subscribe button down below because every week I'm releasing a new video that'll just teach you all about this wonderful breed with things you may not have even ever known. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm still at Jill Hedgecock's house and I found something really cool. If you've read the book, you'll know exactly what this is. Here it is in person.